I, I was with Macmillan uh, later this afternoon, one of our customers, the, the publisher up in New York City. Well, let me tell you the story. And I'm going to tell you the ExxonMobil story, because there are two ends of the spectrum, and I find them very interesting. I'm not sure if one's right and one's wrong, or it's just a different set of circumstances for each. Macmillan publishes a book owned by a German parent. Distribution channel, Barnes & Nobles, Borders, and Amazon.com. Borders, goodbye. Amazon.com will not share data with most of the publishers about who bought the book. That's their competitive advantage. It accounts for 50% of most sales in books. One third of your distribution channel through Borders gone. One half of your channel, roughly speaking, through Amazon.com, not open to giving you information. The remaining channel, Barnes & Noble, is important, but not going to drive you the full knowledge of the marketplace. 20% of all books are now ebooks. The forecast calls for that to grow to 50% within the next three years. You are Macmillan. You sell romance novels and science fiction novels and all kinds of very good books. You don't know your end customer. You don't know them because you don't sell to them directly. And yet you're watching your own distribution channel really create some significant challenges to the corporation. So what do you do? And I gave this problem, I, I'm on the secondary school committee for the University of Pennsylvania, my alma mater, to some kids, I interviewed the kids that are going to college, and I gave it to the, the, the freshmen, the kids that wanted to go to Penn, I gave this problem, and I said, so what do you do? Because I thought you know, the young kids would come up with a better solution than I would. They came pretty close, actually, several of them. One kid said to me, hey, Mark, we should be in the e-store at Macmillan, and we sell books, and we know who buys the books. I said, that's a very logical suggestion, but Macmillan sees itself in the publishing business, not in the e-store business. Out. Another one said, well, what about if we create social communities, one about science fiction, one about romance, and what about the different genres that are at Macmillan, and we, inside those communities, we sponsor it with authors that, you know, that they love, and first chapters of the books, and when the authors come into the city, and we do all that sort of stuff, and then creates a little bit of a buzz, and we have a little contest and some polls, and, and we create a community. And in fact, that's the strategy that Macmillan is adopting. So they've said, in terms of distribution, we will continue with our Amazon.com and, and Barnes and & Nobles, but we would simply be stupid not to have a better knowledge of our end customer and create an open relationship with them. And we're going to do that in part through the social tools that will allow us to capture information inside the profile so we can do a better job at a two-way dialogue with that customer. Are you tracking with me? That's one side of the fence. ExxonMobil, I believe, is still the world's largest corporation. We've had the pleasure of working with them for many, many years on many, many projects. So they're of the belief right now that they should put increased focus on their distributors worldwide. And let's just take the Lubes part of the business, and for those who don't know Lubes, you'll know Mobile One. Okay? But let's take the Mobile One part of the business, of some subset of it. So now the question is, if we're going to put increased focus on the distributor, who's responsible for lead generation to the distributor? So let's say we make a, a, um, a promotion of Mobile One for the police departments in America and all police cars should run with Mobile One because you don't have to change your oil as often. Is it the distributors that should come up with the police leads or is it ExxonMobil that should feed the leads to the distributor? Should ExxonMobil offer the leads to the distributors and those, should those leads go into the distributor's CRM system that is integrated into ExxonMobil or since distributors are independent, is that a foolish thought to think that we could actually ask them to track the leads and share that knowledge with us? And ExxonMobil, we're in the middle of doing this right now, the strategy is not totally locked. But we're looking at, in an increasingly complex distribution channel world, where strategy is up for grabs, how best to work with distributors. Is it the Caterpillar model, where, where dealers are literally an extension of the Caterpillar channel, and we align sales processes and sales technologies with that channel? Or is it more on the Macmillan side, where we acknowledge that the distribution channel may or may not be our loyal partners, 
and therefore we create the direct relationship with customers. And that's a trend all of you will face in the future, and it implies process enhancement, and it implies people retraining on those processes, and it implies new technology to drive those processes. You with me?